Triassic in age. So one of the neat things about uh, the Black Hills area here in Western South Dakota is we have the complete section of rocks, complete Mesozoic section of rocks. Uh, we have Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. We start in Spearfish with the Spearfish Formation, all those red rocks that rim the Black Hills, followed by the Jurassic period, which is represented by the Sundance Seaway, or Sundance Formation. That's an old seaway that was here a long, long time ago, about 160 million years ago. And then above that is the Morrison Formation, right? That's the, the, the rocks that are outcropping along the bottoms of these uh, little draws here little hills. Okay. The Morrison Formation is roughly 145 to 155 million years old and it is full of dinosaurs wherever it is found. It goes all up and down the front range of the Rockies. Uh, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado all have lots of great exposures of the Morrison Formation and that's where we get all of our large brontosaurs, big sore pods. You know what brontosaurs, right? Still not quite there yet. I've got a slight grin on him. You gonna smile yet? No? Maybe? Possibly? Alright, I'll throw in some more jokes later. Alright. Anyway, brontosaurus. What's a brontosaur? Big thing on two legs with long neck. Not bad. Good. Big thing with two, uh, four legs, actually. Four legs. Four legs. Very long neck, little tiny head. Their teeth are peg like for uh, cropping off tough plants and chewing them some of these big long-necked brontosaurs, uh, the proper term would be sauropod, these big sauropods can reach huge lengths. You're talking 100 to 100 feet long animals. The biggest one that's known is from Argentina. It's called Argentinosaurus. That would reach a length of over 130 feet long, 140 possibly. Very big animals, weighing tons and tons and tons and tons of weight. Some of the more common ones that come out of the rocks here in North America in the Morrison Formation would be Apatosaurus, Camarasaurus, Diplodocus, Barosaurus. Uh, those are some of the, the big ones. Ultrasaurus, Supersaurus, Seismosaurus, those, those other ones. And they can be found back there in the Morrison Formation. Now as we go, what geologists call up section, as we go up the section of rock, we start getting it from older stuff to younger stuff. So as we're driving down this road here, if you look off into the right, you see some of those outcrops of sandstone. Okay. Those sandstone outcrops are Cretaceous in age. This is the beginning part of the Cretaceous. Uh, those are a rock unit called the Fall River Group, or the Dakota Sandstone, Fall River Sandstone. Those rocks, Cretaceous in age, roughly about 110 million years old. They're sitting right on top of rocks that are 145 billion years old. That's weird. You following that? There's a gap in time there, isn't there? Yeah. That's what geologists call an unconformity. That means there was an erosional event there where the rocks were uh, above sea level for a long period of time and in, a, in an area of active erosion. So. Rocks that were deposited there, if there were any, were being eroded away. Now, somewhere in that unconformity, that little gap there, all those big brontosaurs go extinct. The typical things we know as, a, as a sauropods pretty much go extinct. And later on, in places like Utah, they're replaced by other long necked, big bodied animals, uh, very similar to the brontosaurs but slightly different because they have armor plating on their sides. They're called titanosaurs. They get big too, um, but somewhere in that little gap of time, 45 million years or so, or uh, 35 million years or so, um, something happens with, uh, with the, the, uh, the animals, the dinosaurs that are around at the time. Okay. But anyway, the Black Hills basically themselves are an igneous uplift. So there's a big bubble of hot molten rock pushing its way up through the surface. And uh, you know volcanoes, right? Yeah. Yeah. What does a volcano do? When 
that hot rock. Melts rock and blows up and kills everything in its path. <laughs> That's about right. That's right. Just like Yellowstone can do? Yes. Yeah. Yellowstone is a super volcano. It's a huge, huge caldera right there in Yellowstone Lake. Uh, most volcanoes, uh, when, they, when they erupt, they're very explosive. Right? So you have these layers of hot molten rock that stream down the sides of it, or volcanic ash that gets deposited in layers. Well, all that's called an, ex an igneous extrusive. It's extruding out of the earth. Okay, It's coming out of the earth. But sometimes you get hot rock, hot magma, that's pushing its way up, and it doesn't come out of the surface. It's stuck. So it just builds up giant hills, mountains, and then well, that's that's pretty close. Yeah, that's that's about right. Um, sometimes it doesn't get to the surface and it bubbles up and folds or, or bends all the rocks above it. And as it does, uh, particularly on the northern flank of the Black Hills, the rocks are tilted up like this. The sedimentary rocks that were lying flat were all pushed up like this. So that means as we move to the uh, to the east. Belfouche here, north and east of Belfouche, we start going from older rocks around the edges of the Black Hills to younger rocks. We do what geologists call going up section. Right? So that's why we have a ring of, if we looked at a geologic map, you'd see uh, the Black Hills kind of look like a bullseye with a young core of granite, that hot magma that, that kind of cooled under the, under the surface of the earth, uh, and coincentric rings of very old rocks near Deadwood, where you guys are staying in Deadwood. Some of those rocks there are very old. They're 1.8 to 2 billion years old. Uh, some of the oldest rocks in North America. But then you've got these additional layers of other rocks that are above. No, no lightning today. Wednesday and uh, uh, Thursday is a good day. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, this could be uh, a very long ride with not much at the end of it. I suspect we get out there and just we're too slick to go down the road. We're just going to turn around and come back. Oh, yeah, this is not bad at all. spots, um, we're surrounded by dinosaurs, primarily Triceratops and Edmontosaurus. As we get closer and closer to the buttes, you're going to notice that they have different layers, fine layers of sediment, sandstones, mudstones, siltstones, carbonaceous shales, coal horizons. See the black layers up there are usually coal horizons. They represent swampier environments. Yellow horizons are typically river channel sandstones, and the light gray bands are sometimes volcanic ash beds or fine sands with some volcanic ash in them. And the red horizons are typically gravel deposits of ironstone, which are either formed in old soil horizons or as uh, channel lag deposits at the very bottom of the river channel. So this whole area would have looked very similar to coastal Carolinas, coastal Texas, a little bit like Louisiana. We have a shallow sea slowly receding off to our east, a 
and behind it would be this floodplain slowly migrating out over the top of the marine rocks. As I've said before, we are not the first people to come out here. We probably won't be the last. This, this, this ranch here has been explored by many people over many years, at least since the 1970s. Uh, the landowner's first wife uh, was very much into uh, paleontology when she would hike up and down the buttes looking for fossils. The uh, east side of, the out, uh, of those buttes over there have produced uh, a couple partial triceratops skeletons and part of an ankylosaur. Uh, on the south side there's been several ductile dinosaur skeletons taken. Right up here where we're going to pause for a moment weather and see whether we're going to be able to make it to the main quarry. Uh, there's also been some more Triceratops material found. And part of the problem that we have today, especially with the weather, as you guys know, as I've explained before, is that the volcanic ash that, that got out into some of this uh, these sandstones and mudstones and siltstones, there's always a little bit of a volcanic ash component. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a consistent volcanic ash layer uh, for it to, to be in there. And one of the components of volcanic ash, at least out here, is called is a mineral called bentonite, called the mineral of a thousand uses. When it gets wet, it becomes super slick and slimy, and that's our issue here. Usually, if they get over an inch of rain, uh, I have to call the gig because it's too wet. Yeah. 